Red light. Go get some food. <laughs> Just choked. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready to go. <laughs> episode 48 as Ellie's choking. This is going to be the Ellie <laughs> choking episode <laughs> instead of the Ellie. Ellie was laughing. <laughs> laughing. Brought to you by RP Strength and Trifecta. I'm not doing CPR on her. Me either. You are. No, You've I'm not. known her longer than nope. me. Okay, then you are. <laughs> you are. New guy. He's I don't got even know CPR. <laughs> <laughs> they they let it. me die. It's fine. It's I don't even know CPR. We got the usual cast, and we have a, a, a new guest. guest. Yeah. Ovince St. Prue. Man. You, Welcome. First UFC thank fighter we've ever had. First UFC fighter. Ex University of Tennessee volunteer football player as well. Linebacker, defensive end. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. We're not talking about it right now. It's a big weekend ahead. It is. It Listen, is. This is. Oh yeah. This is probably perfect down there. timing for Florida, this. Florida versus Tennessee. Gosh. Exactly. Let's talk it. Let's get some trash talk. Going. But we're both from Florida, and he just said, "See ya." Bye. Listen, that doesn't Bye. matter. He played for Tennessee. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but look, this this is the way I this is, I always root for University of Tennessee, hands down, and usually. When the bowl when the bowl games come around, I, I root for all the SEC teams and all the teams in Florida. Okay, okay. All right. well that's fine. We can be friends again. It's okay. okay. But yeah. UT, go Vols. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to say to that? Uh, I'm not talking about it. All right. We'll you see. have lived here how long, and you've never been to a UT Florida game at UT? Four and she years. claims that she's a huge Florida fan. Uh, you know, I like w- if I was. Anywhere near a Notre Dame game and had the chance to go, I would go in a heartbeat. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, for sure. I was a little bit spoiled. So in my tenure oh, at the University a of Florida. A little bit spoiled. <laughs> it's fine. We, we just won the yeah. national championship in football and basketball and football. So we just were always winning. I'm so, quitting again. You know. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get out of here. Anyway. So I was just, it's fine. It's fine. So tell us about you. Tell us uh, how you ended up going from football to UFC fighting. Oh, man, I literally, it, it's funny because I literally walked in the gym. Like one day I had a, one of my fraternity brothers, he was like, hey, I'm going to, you know, this kickboxing class. I was like, I used to watch karate movies back in the day. I want to <laughs> take, take kickboxing. And then uh, he said kickboxing. I was thinking about the movie Kickboxer, And I was like, okay, I want to go. Um, He went the first day. I went with him the next day and I uh, got there and I'm like, this is, this is not kickboxing. This is mixed martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of stuck with it, and it just kept on. I just kept on going. But it was funny. The only reason I, I just, you know, after my football career ended, I was like, I need something to keep me in shape. I need something to keep me in shape. I was seeing a lot of my old teammates come back to town, and I'm like, hey, what happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start putting, I tell people, it's just like, you know, as athletes, especially in college, you want to have fun you're in college. So when you work out, you work out because you have to. You don't work out, you get in trouble. Mm-hmm. So. When you continue, uh, you know, after you get through playing ball, you probably won't work out the way you used to, but your eating habits going to, you know, stay, stay the room, same. Stay yeah. the same. <laughs> so these boys would come back 50 pounds heavy. Oh, and I was wow. like, okay, that can't be That's me. a lot of pounds. That's a lot. It's a lot. Some of the guys I, I feed, like, it's guys that put on 80 pounds sometimes. Jeez. Yeah. I'll look at them like, man, Holy you cow. need to. Uh, Could you imagine adding 245s to just walking around? Yeah. Like, no. That's a big deal. Because that would be 90 pounds. <laughs> how weird would it, how weird would it be for you to retire and put on fifty pounds? Like come back and Rich Froning's like this fat guy on a couch. I, I feel like he'd go the it. other way. I feel like he'd get skinny. Yeah, probably. I don't he'd know. Get too skinny. It's hard. I mean, I think I topped off. But when I left high school, I was one ninety, one ninety five. Really? What are you yeah. now? As tall as you are now? Yeah. I what was, are you? I six was, five? Six six? Oh, six cow. three. Six three. Yeah, oh, six three and a half. So, got up to about 250 in college. Jeez. And now I'm about 230. Like I'm a maintain- healthy 250, like good <laughs> 250. I was my Yeah, I was I was huge. But I was, I was eating a lot too. Yeah, like yeah. my neck was huge. Like I had <laughs> like I had one of those neck that oh, yeah. my neck my neck was like 22 inches. Jeez. I was huge. I was huge. That's awesome. Wow. So that's, sorry. That's we were scary. talking about your story yeah. about how you ended up human. Fighting from oh, there. Yeah, so you yeah. went in and then you were just went in. Uh, my coach actually tricked me into fighting. Uh, it's kind of funny. So when you wear a boxing glove, we always used to spar. We spar boxing glove. I always wear 18 ounce boxing glove. My biggest thing is I didn't want to get hit. My coach was like, "Okay, look, put your hands up," and he hit me in the side of the arm with the 18 ounce boxing glove. That's the hardest you're gonna get hit. And I'm thinking, "Okay, I can do it." <laughs> now, mind you, mixed martial arts gloves are four ounces. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's 12 ounce difference. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, my first fight, um, I'm in a cage and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, 
okay, I'm ready. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm looking at the guy across the ring, and he was like, fighters, are you ready? He threw his hand up. I threw my hands up. That's my hand going up. I'm like, these are four out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was like, shut the cage door, and I'm like, okay, it's too late to turn the around. cage door, jeez. After that, didn't remember a thing. Really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. An hour after the fight was over, my hands were still shaking. My first amateur fight, yeah. my hands were still shaking. If you ask me what happened in the fight, I couldn't tell you anything. <laughs> tell you anything. I couldn't wow. tell you anything. Had you ever been in a fight growing up, like, leading up to that? Like, had you ever, like, oh, yeah, yeah, been, fought somebody? Like, yeah, I've been in plenty of fights <laughs> growing up. It's just the fact that when it's, it's different, when it's sanctioned, organized, and the other guy knows what he's doing, it, it comes like different like yeah. street fights a lot of guys whoever throws first punch in the lens nine yeah. times out of ten went right so well it's that's what blows my mind about it and that's what i think is so fascinating because we talk about like a lot about like mental stuff and you know across oh. oh this is hard this is painful whatever but most people run away from pain anything that causes pain you literally are running towards pain to inflict pain i mean i just can't imagine the progression of getting to a place where you can walk into a ring and and be prepared for that when most well, people f like run from that true enough i tell people a lot is when, when you train is when i'm training this is where I, this is my concept of training i'm training my body to deliver punishment as to, to punishment. receive punishment too <laughs> mm -hmm. but you know the training aspect of it is not that bad it's just Everything is just mental. Like, fighting is all mental. Like, you see a lot of these guys, like Conor McGregor, he'll psych people out before the fight. Mm -hmm. yep. He'll psych them out before the fight. And, you know, that's a big part of the fight game that I've learned is the, the mental aspect of it. And then even in my gym, my coach, Eric Turner, he hounds us up. He, he literally hounds me day in and day out about the mental aspect of the game. It's to the point, like, okay, you got to read this book. You got to read that book. I know one of the books that we read, at least two of the books that we've been reading that I love is – uh. You know, the 12 was Alive by Jordan Peterson and um, Extreme Ownership. The Extreme Ownership one, that's probably one of the best books I ever read. And that's it's, a Navy SEAL guy, right? Yeah, yeah that's Jocko's Jocko. book, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's, it's intense. It's intense. Well, so were you, like, when you were playing football, like, growing up playing sports, were you, did you consider yourself, like, one of the most mentally tough athletes? Like, is that something that you said to yourself growing up that you identified with? I mean, I wouldn't say that. I didn't identify that just because it's, it was always taught to be like, okay, you're mentally tough. Okay, push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. But the thing about football is a team sport. And I'm even when I work out now to this day, my competition level comes out when I have more people around me. If I'm doing it by myself, I'm like literally like, okay, this is where the, this is where the mental part comes in where mm -hmm. I have to force myself to train. And I'm like, okay, after they train, I'm like, man, this is a good workout. But when you have somebody else with, there with you or a couple other guys, girls there with you, like the competition level is unreal. It goes. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, okay, I would not be denied. <laughs> going but, like, I, I think going into a ring, you versus somebody else, and the cage door close, closes, geez. and it's you versus them, that's a whole different kind of feeling. It, You're literally putting yourself in a position where – um, in front of the whole world, it's you versus him, and somebody's going to come out on top and somebody's not. Gonna, and that's different than the whole team piece. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. The, you know, the team aspect of it, especially playing football at University of Tennessee, I know if I miss a tackle or slack off, somebody else can, you know, probably help me out. Or if I miss, uh, if I had a busted play, that can you can hide that with 21 other players on yeah. the field. But you ain't hiding it. Makes it. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can hide it, but you can you can t you can think to yourself, "Man, I messed up." Or when coaches are watching the film, they be like, "Yeah, you messed up right here." <laughs> the consequences yeah. are just so big in a yeah. fight. Yeah. You oh know? yeah. You make we, a mistake, you pay. We, you know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the thing about a fight is, you can get sometimes like your drilling is going so much, and you're in there, you can get hit, and sometimes you don't feel it. But the crowd will let you know you got hit. Right? <laughs> They'll be like, I felt something. But sometimes, <laughs> there have been situations you get hit and you go to sleep. You've talked about the difference between being an individual mm -hmm. and a team. <clears throat> yeah. yep. you know, probably there's some correlations to the pressure. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I played baseball growing up. I played some football, but baseball was my thing. So there was individual aspects of it, but it's still a team sport. You screw yeah. up, somebody else got your back. And then when we – so I competed for years as an individual – it was just a completely different thing. When it's all you and when you screw up, you're like, dang, yep. everybody's looking at you, you know. It's completely different, though, than him. Like, at least with us, there was 
at least 10 other people on the floor so there's other people to watch and you right. probably weren't in last there were times where <laughs> right. i was in last right but you know like with you it's one-on-one -on -one. it's like those are the two people are watching yeah Jeez. if you are two guys in there and thank god for football it's, it's crazy you learn its own mm -hmm. things out yep. like you know Special playing tennessee deep. football field like, come on you, well, you get 110,000 people screaming yeah, in your right. ears. For some reason, the only voice I could pick out yep. is, you know, D coordinators. Now, when I'm when I'm fighting, I'm in the octagon. I'm like thinking to myself, like, okay, I can hear my trainer. That's it. So a lot of times, like, I'm in there and they tell me to do something, do this, do that, and I'm like, the times I don't listen is the times I find myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. And people will be like, well, I didn't feel like I was close enough. I didn't feel like. You know, I could have done that. And I was like, you know, I'll tell, I have to tell people from the perspective of, you know, I'm in the octagon fighting somebody and they're right in front of me. I can see them. You know, I can gauge it depending how what I want to do. I can gauge the distance. I can do all of that. But, you know, I got my coaches outside of the outside of the cage and they're looking at me and be like, OK, this is what you need to throw. This is how you need to throw it. Or you need to push forward. If you push forward, you can counter with this. Because they can see per the perspective from both fighters. Yep. I can only see a perspective <laughs> from your, my side. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it helps out a lot when you have the coaches there. That's why I listen to the coaches. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, with when I competed, I honestly, you know, it's so loud in the stadium, like especially at tennis stadium when we used to compete. But you can't hear any of that. You just hear your judge, you know, your barbell. You can see other people and kind of gauge. But everything, it's kind of crazy. It's just that whole tunnel vision thing where everything goes quiet. I mean, we have the same stuff when we're on team, but mm – -hmm. It's just different. It is. It is. It's, it's different. It's intense, too. And, like, momentum swings are big, too. Yeah. Momentum swings are big because one minute you can be doing something, next minute you'd be like, okay, you're on your back. What happened? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Before we get away from the mentality stuff, talk about that. You know, you talked about the books that you've read. What are some of the keys for you? We have a lot of people that watch the podcast and, and want to know about CrossFit kinds of things. Talk about some mentality stuff from your perspective. Um, well, I think with me, the biggest mental aspect is, and I tell people when you do, when you do like mental skills training is essentially brainwashing yourself, you know what to do. But at the same time, you just like, you can have outside factors that are distracting you. And just like, if I'm telling myself, you know, I got, uh, my, um, checklist that I usually go through, they're like 14, like, uh, self-control, self-confidence, you know, anxious, you know, if I'm a, from numbers one through five, how are you feeling? You got um, focus. Uh, like you, I'm, I'm going through this checklist pretty much every day, every day, every day, every day up until the fight time. And then my trainer will be like, "Hey, what are your checklists right now?" This is my checklist. Boom, 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 boom. Right but you know, I go through my checklist. But the mental aspect of it, you know, it don't start necessarily, you know, with, you know, that. It, for me, like when I was reading Extreme Ownership. For me, it starts off the minute I wake up in the morning. Yeah. And people don't realize, like, when I wake up, if I hit that snooze button and I don't get my butt up right away, mm -hmm. my day is done. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I wow. have to hit it more than once, like, it literally that snowballs. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like I'm trying to – every time I feel like I'm trying to pe play catch up mm -hmm. because I, I got started off late. So I'm playing catch up, and it's just my whole day is completely done. Like, I wake up in the morning. I wake up at 6, hit that snooze button, and I'm up. Wow. I'm up. I have to be because if I'm not, I know my day is going to be off. Yeah. Wow. So. So it's more about lifestyle. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. It's just rain. like mixed martial arts has to be a lifestyle. You know, football is seasonal. Mm -hmm. You got pretty much all the sports are seasonal, and with football has to not football. Well, mixed martial arts has to be a lifestyle because you know there's times where I fought. I mean, I got to fight October sixth. Who knows when's the next time I'm going to fight? It might be two weeks later. It might be four or five months later. Yeah. So, you know, it's year round. So you ha it has to be a lifestyle. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it can be draining too. Yeah. Um, but it has to be a lifestyle. Well, football, at least I knew when I was going to play during the fall. Right. Yeah. I know off season, right after football season, it, pretty much all the athletes are done, don't really do anything. You start getting yourself back in shape pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. late spring, early summer. Right. What's so. very similar to CrossFit then yeah. in the way you live your life. What? Lifestyle Just stuff? Lifestyle. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, we don't really have an – I mean, <clears throat> we do have downtime technically, not now with the, the changes that we don't really know what's going on. But, yeah, I mean, there's no 
it's like you have to live it. There's no, you don't get a full decompress couple months, you know, yeah. like. And that's a hard part it's hard. too. It's hard. How long you been doing it? I've been going on nine and a half, ten years. Yeah, now. Jeez, that's, right. that's yeah. a long time. Almost, almost exactly the same amount I have. Wow. Yeah. And it and it's and it's hard too, just because at times you want to relax. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes I want to go <laughs> yeah, home, right. spend time with my family. Yeah. Yeah. And next year, you know, coach, hey, you got to get fight. your butt back yeah. up here. <laughs> yeah. What's the shortest notice you've ever taken a fight on? Um, shortest, <clears throat> probably. Like four or five days. Oh, really? yeah. jeez! How's that one turn? Fight? Yeah. How'd it turn out? I ended up losing that fight. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember um, there was a time I fought in Strike Force. I had a fight um, November nineteenth. I remember having a fight November nineteenth, and that following week I was home for Thanksgiving. Had a full blown Thanksgiving meal. Get a phone call Friday morning from my trainer. Hey, how much do you weigh? Oh, uh, <laughs> why? Every time you get a phone call and say, how much are you weigh? The next you question is going to be like, yeah, yeah something's up. Uh. So I'm out Black Friday shopping and I run into a Target <laughs> and I hopped on a scale. I'm like, I'm like 224. And I'm like, how do you feel about fighting next week? Jeez. Like, wait, 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 wait. What are you talking about? So I took a fight, had a fight November 19th, fought December 4th because Black Friday, I flew back. I actually bought myself a plane ticket on Friday night, flew out Saturday, fought that following week, Gosh. which is December 4th. And I get through fighting, and they were like, hey, you know, we're coming to Nashville. How would you like to fight in Nashville? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that'd be great. And I was like, when? The next week. <laughs> it wasn't the next week. It was the next month. Oh, it was, okay. it was essentially a month later. So it was uh, January 7th, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, and my training was like, um, uh, so how do you feel about that? And I was like, okay, it was three fights within the seven week period in my training. After that, after that third fight, and all three fights went all three rounds. After yeah. that third fight, I was like, I'm was out like, for a little bit. Yeah, I need a timeout. Yeah, I need a, yeah, timeout. I need a break. Yeah. Do you think you perform better on like the short notice fight like that, or are you more strategic in that? Like you like that ten weeks, you like that extra preparation or learning, you know? Or is it like you know you've won a week later and you just go in there and? I like short notice fights. Um, just for the simple aspect, like that ten. Man, the thing about having like a 10 week to, to, to 12 week training camp, I tell people like your personal life has got to be going well mm -hmm. and your training life got to be going well. Because if your training in life is not going well, it's going to reflect your personal life. If your personal life is not well, going well, it's going to reflect your training life. So much to say. So, yeah. yeah. Like wow. it's, it, and it's, it's just insane just because I'm like, if I get hurt during training, I'm going to be annoyed mm -hmm. and I can take it <laughs> back home. Mm -hmm. If, you have a problem back home, you're gonna get annoyed, and you're not gonna be focused training. Mm -hmm. So it that's one of the main reasons I like you know like short notice fights. Sometimes if I could take a fight, I've taken fights in you know month time before, and you know with that month time it gives me enough time to be like okay, shut everything off and just put everything I can into there instead of like you know when you have those long training camps. You, necess you can't necessarily put everything into every single day because it's going to be day after day after day after day. Again, that's when the mental yeah. preparation comes in. And sometimes it's just training. Wow. So you're, you're, <clears throat> you're on the UFC roster mm -hmm. and you're seventh rated light heavyweight? I think six or seven. I yeah, think that's so. That's awesome. That's yeah. legit. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Can you take us through, I mean, because I feel like if, you know, the day of a fight, um, can you take us through – you know, from waking up till the time the last bell rings in terms, because I feel like, how do you keep yourself at bay and not get too amped up early on in the day for something that obviously your body is going to be probably at its highest state? Um, it's just different. Well, the day of the fight is kind of easy because I usually tell myself, well, I'm going on around this time and I should be done. So if I go on around 10 o'clock at night, I say, if I go on about 10 o'clock at night, I know I'll be done about 1030. And I was like, okay, I should be done about 10.30. So if I'm done about 10.30, 10.31, so I'll just start thinking about 10.31. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, the more I start thinking about the fight, the more anxious you start getting. And then after that, you start pacing yourself. But, you know, the day of the fight is pretty easy. It's the week of the fight. You got to understand the week of the fight. You come in. Usually we get there we on get a Tuesday. Stuff. 
Yeah, you got to do media stuff. When you're doing media stuff, you got media obligations you got to do. And I've learned, I used to learn to hate it just because I'm like, look, I just want to come in, relax, lose my weight, weigh in after I get to weigh in and fight. But you got obligations and stuff for certain reasons. So now I learned to love the media obligation. I actually love it now. But I think usually the Thursday and I say pretty much like Thursday afternoon, Friday morning ish when you're about to make weight, I think that's the hardest part. Because you gotta understand I'm I'm walking around right now two twenty five, two thirty. But the week of the fight, I get there Tuesday, I'm around, you know, two twenty, probably sometimes three to four, uh, probably sometimes around two twenty three. And I have to be in. I have to weigh in at 205. At 205? Good yeah. gosh. Oh, my. What do you do? Just, oh. you know, you essentially Holy end up cutting cow. your carbs out. A lot of people got different ways of cutting weight. It's whatever oh makes gosh. you feel good. Some guys can cut it. In the sun. I know some guys who who cut, like, 24 hours before weighing, like, 15 pounds. I can't do that. Good. I oh. can't do that. Cow. That's a lot. I've cut I can't do six pounds in, like, two months. <laughs> 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 I think that's the hardest part. I think that's probably by far the hardest part of fighting yeah. the weight cutting. Yeah, that's a man. Because diet actually really didn't really didn't turn out to be a big thing until probably about seven, ten years ago. Then everybody is just like everything has to be perfectly mm-hmm. in line. It's crazy how like when you die and I'm like, what are you eating? You're like, I can't eat this. <laughs> you're going out and stuff and I'm I'm ha- I'm walking around with, you know, a six pack and everybody was like, what are you doing? I'm like, do you have a microwave? <laughs> but sometimes there have been times it's just like people didn't even have a microwave and I'm like sitting there eating some cold broccoli, <laughs> cold chicken and some cold brown rice. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it ends up being bad. What yeah. is your diet like? What's that? Right now it consists of... Um, my protein, um, complex carbs, my vegetables, and uh, my good fats. So, so you don't want to go over to Ralph Donuts afterwards? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I can, and, it, and it's crazy. When you, when I actually started, because when I grew up playing football, before a football game, they were like. They want you on. Yeah, yeah they want you. Yeah. yeah, they want <laughs> pasta, pasta, pasta. And now it's just like, okay, you just can't eat regular pasta. got to be whole wheat pasta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when you actually do that, like I tell people, we were like, so how do you do, why do you, you can feel the difference when you, when you eat clean. Like mm-hmm. I can train better and I can train longer. Just mm-hmm. period. Wow. So it helps out. I mean, it helps out tremendously. I mean, sometimes the food is not the best, but you know, you got to do what you got to yeah. do. Yeah. Well, you talk about too, um, you're talking about kind of just only being able to hear your trainer while you're in the ring. How do you, to me, uh, it makes me think of trust. Like you're literally in a ring fighting someone and you have to trust this person. How do you cultivate trust with your coach or even pick somebody that you're going to depend on to make those really big decisions? Um, it's easy for me because my trainer knows me better than I know myself. Because <laughs> there's times where I'll see something and he'll be like, I'm like, hey, can I try this? He's like, no, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> I'm like, and, and I'll tell him, and I'm like, no, I want to try it. He's like, no, it's not going to work for me. And then after that, he was like, and he'll just give me an example. Try to do it in practice today. And I'll, all right, I, I, I don't like it. Like I told you, it's not yeah. going to work for you. So a lot How of did time, you meet your trainer? Um, I met him through uh, one of my fraternity brothers. Oh, okay. um, he was actually, my other trainer, Joey Zonar, they, they took class together. And Joey did a presentation on mixed martial arts. And that's when he told me he was going to kickboxing. He said he was going to kickboxing, but he meant to say mixed UFC, martial yeah. arts. <laughs> so I was like, that's how we ended up meeting. meeting. I've been with him since day one. Wow. So is that why you stay in Knoxville or why you stay yeah. in Knoxville instead of go back? Okay. Yeah. I was actually pretty much was going to move back down to Florida. Yeah. Until I started doing, until I started training in mixed martial arts. When I started doing that, it's getting good, getting good. My trainer was like, yeah, you should think about fighting. Wow. I had a couple fights. And I was like, how how far do you think I can make this? And he was like, um, with your potential, your talent right now, you can be a UFC champ. And I was like, okay. That's all, <laughs> that's all he needed. Do this. <laughs> and it was straightforward from then. What's that's the biggest awesome. moment been for you so far in the UFC? Or um, in fighting? Fighting. Um, You've been all the world. I mean, yeah. Japan, Thailand. Singapore, Brazil, Manchester. Yeah, I've been in a lot of places. Biggest moment. Um... I took a fight against John Jones on a two weeks notice. And that was intense. <laughs> that was 
took it on two weeks' notice. It was two thirty six. I had a two thirty six. Wow. Yeah. And when you fight for the, it was for the interim title. And when you fight for the title, you have to weigh in at two hundred five. They usually give you a pound, but you have to weigh in at two hundred five. Oh my gosh! Arguably the, you know, I'm just not going to offend you. Arguably the greatest fighter in the history of the UFC. Yeah, the dude is. If insane. he could stay clean, yeah. holy smokes! If he can stay clean and not do something stupid and wreck his life, he's suspended right now, right? Uh, yeah. I yeah. think it's supposed to be coming back soon. That's epic. Yeah. I mean, just to two step weeks. in the ring like that is on two, two weeks. weeks. Notice. It was it was intense just because like the whole entire training camp. It was a two week training camp, and you. Uh, not until, I mean, a lot of times my coach was like, "Look, your life stop." I had one of my coaches move in with me, <laughs> and literally it went from training from like I just got back from Florida, didn't do anything. I, I didn't do anything for like almost I want to say four or five weeks because um, I had sprained my ankle. During my last fight, it was in February, and I'm like, okay, cool. Not first week of training, get a phone call. And I'm like, geez, okay, I know they might end up calling me. And I was like, I'm going to have to take this fight. Took the fight, the whole entire training camp. I was training 8 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and 7 o'clock at night, two hours, just boom, 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 boom. And make sure every time in between, if I'm not doing any type of recovery, I'm resting. Um, making sure it literally I had people – like I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be asleep, and I had one of my coaches be like, "Hey, you got to eat this right now." Wow! Like it was crazy. Then um, fight week was intense. Even during the fight was pretty intense. Um, going into the third round, I know he threw a kick, and I um, ended up breaking my arm. Oh my gosh! And um, and the, still finished the fight. And uh, my coach kept on telling me, he was like, um, why aren't you throwing your left hand? I was like, my arm broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how do you know your arm broken? It's just like, look, I know how a drill it feels like literally yeah. after the fight. And I, I told him, I was like, my arm is broken. They was like, how do you know? I'm like, it's not supposed to be hurting that. Uh-uh, not like this. <laughs> and I'm going to the hospital, took some x-rays, my arm's broken. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. Jeez. Well, that's, that's like, huge. how do you... So, I mean, you discussed earlier today, we were talking and you were telling me like, okay, well, sometimes I'll run and then I'll do this and then I'll do this and I'll do this. But I mean, we know from like adaptation and CrossFit, like you have to push yourself. Like Rich makes us do these terrible things we would never do so that as we get closer, it's easier. And on competition day, it's, it's very easy. But how do you replicate that? Like you're stepping into a ring to like, you can't break your arm in practice. So, no. I mean, how do you replicate that or get to that point? You really don't. I tell people when it comes down to it, it's just more mental than anything. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of times you just, you, you can really find out how, you can really find out how much you can do just mentally. I mean, you can put me through a physical workout. I'm going to finish it. And, you know, I can probably puke, but I'm going to finish it. <laughs> a couple hours later, I can go through another workout. Mm-hmm. And it's just the mental preparation about it. And, you know, a lot of times, especially during the fight, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> it, it can be... It, it can be calm one second and it can be total chaos. It can, anything can happen. So it's hard, you know, as fighters too, you want to be prepared for everything, yeah, but you can't, it, you, it's too hard to be prepared for everything. So T- tell people what the, what's the difference between training and fighting? Um, well, training is just, <sighs> training is predictable. Fighting is not right. Especially when you train and you got different training partners, you can, Pretty much all my training partners, I know every single one of their styles. And once I'm sparring with them, I can adapt to that style right. completely. The guy that I'm fighting, I probably never trained with him before. But given the fact that I've never sparred with him before, I haven't adapted to that uh, um, style yet. So training is always pretty much predictable. Mm-hmm. Fighting is not. Anything can happen during fight. How often do you actually go like 100% in training? You're in the ring and you're flat fighting with somebody does it ever happen or? in training or in a fight i'm talking about in training i can't go 100 percent in training right bad things start happening <laughs> i think people, I, don't, I don't think people really understand that i think people that aren't aren't into the ufc at all they think you guys are always fighting and that's no really no no no, no 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 a lot of times it, it, it depends you know there's times where like i'm an explosive athlete like it don't take much for me to throw a kick break somebody's arm throw a kick and break somebody's rib it don't take much at all so I know my limitations within training, but I know I also know how to turn it on and turn it off. Because within fighting, I don't, I don't care if you put your hands up, I'm going to throw a kick, it's going to break your arm. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ooh. That goes with what we do too. I mean, we don't, we never train at a hundred percent. You can't, you can't recreate that ever. Cause then I, like you're saying the competitive nature, even in training, you're still not given a hundred percent, you know, you, you can't, your body won't, you, you can do it for, you can go full tilt almost a hundred percent, probably a day. Then your body's not going to be the same yeah. day for the rest of the week. For, if yeah. you do that, this time's on a Monday. <laughs> I went full go on a Monday, and I'm like, man, I'm going to pay for this the rest of the week. <laughs> like, literally, I'm dragging the whole entire this week. This is going to cost right. me. <laughs> like, yeah. it, you can't, it's impossible to go full tilt. Your body can't keep up with that type. Right. And you just, it, it, for me, I just got to know, you know, when I can, you know, press the gas pedal, step off, press the gas pedal, step off. Even during a fight, you can't go 100%. Yeah. Right. Because you go 100% in the you're fight, done. good luck. Yeah. Wow. Adrenaline dump and you're done. That's, well, uh. Drilling and dump, you just you can't keep your hands up. Right. And the worst thing in a fight is basically being tired to the point where you can't defend yourself and somebody just picking you oh, apart. Yeah. Oh, wow. that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is a oh, bad. that sounds bad. <laughs> I mean, think about like the, the most tired you've ever been in CrossFit. And then just trying to fight somebody. Yeah, and then physically trying to defend yourself. But that's why I asked about the ring, because I feel like there's so much adrenaline there. But it's like the even octagon. If, oh, sorry, the octagon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the octagon. Okay, let's get that right. Out. I know. Jeez. Get it together. I used so, to watch it with my dad when I was little. What did, anyway. you, what did you think of the Mayweather-McGregor boxing match? For... For... Uh, actually, for the both of them, just... Big money move. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. What do you think about McGregor's conditioning after round four? Um, you know, it's different. Yeah. But the thing about it is, people don't realize McGregor walks around almost one one eighty one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So McGregor set up that fight perfectly. Floyd walks walks around one forty two. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of people was like, "Well, McGregor hit Floyd more than he ever had been hit before." Floyd kept on walking forward the whole yeah. entire time. Yeah. And if you're walking forward the whole entire time, I'm throwing punches the whole entire time, I'm going to get tired. Yeah. And after, I think, round... It was like four, uh, four or five, five, something like that. I think four. That's when it started to like set in. You were like, oh, he's in trouble a little bit. <laughs> four, Florida landed, one good, uh, landed a good punch. And then round five, he landed he landed a good punch in the beginning of the round and towards the end of the round. I was like, man, this fight is over. He's going to mm-hmm. stop him. Mm-hmm. And um, after that, it's just, it was, it was over. I mean... Connor, Connor went in there just like he was the first guy to actually cross. Yeah, I thought it was a great fight. Yeah. I mean, I don't really watch boxing at all, and that was one of the first boxing matches that I watched. It was entertaining. It was yeah, entertaining it was for sure. Entertaining. It was yeah. way more entertaining than I thought. Yeah. I thought I was like, this is just a money grab, and it's going to be a lame fight. But it, it was a better fight than I thought. But I just – he looked he looked spent by about round four. I was like, ooh. It's different, man. It's yeah. different. Like, you can be training. Your striking can be pretty good. But I tell people with boxing – with boxers, when you see them fight and stuff, people to be just be thinking they just be throwing hard punches. If you really look at their foot movement, like if you look at uh, Lomachenko right now, yeah, it's like he's dancing in the dancing, ring. His yeah. movement and stuff is incredible. It's incredible. And then after that, you get mixed martial arts guys. Depending what background you come from, you can't you know you can't do those movements. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're you know if if you're a wrestler or a jiu-jitsu guy or even a, even strikers can't even do that. That type of movement. It's ridiculous. Right. So, what do you kind of consider yourself? Uh, well-rounded. Um, yeah. I like to strike, you know, but I can wrestle. And I know a little uh, – my jiu-jitsu is unorthodox, so I typically go for the things people won't see. Right. Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable on the ground, though? I mean – Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I have to be because, you know, a lot of guys – a lot of guys put themselves – like, and this is another big thing about fighting, too, that I've come to terms with. You know, if I come from a, I see a lot of fighters, they come from a kickboxing background, jiu-jitsu background, or wrestling background, and they want to stick to that. When they go to the gym, they want to be like, okay, all I want to do is just strike in. And, you know, when it's time for me to do jiu-jitsu or whatnot, or wrestling, I work on that. Me, I'm, I consider myself to be, to be a pretty decent fighter, but I put myself in an uncomfortable situation. If you're uncomfortable about a certain style, if I'm uncomfortable, if I'm a striker and I'm uncomfortable about wrestling, I probably need to work more wrestling. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Cause if I start getting comfortable with re- re- wrestling, then, you know, you can start, you know, mixing, you know, your right. striking and wrestling together. Cause you get some guys who'd be like, nah, you know what? I'm just going to chill right here. I'm not going to do any striking or whatnot. And be like, 
bro, you're striking, you're striking sucks. You probably need to work on your striking. Right. So, hmm. you know. That's cool. There's a lot of crossover between what we do and what they do. I mean, it's so like much. we get comfortable at certain movements or certain mm -hmm. time domains and stuff like that. That's probably what you need yeah. to work on yeah. is something else, you know. So it's cool. That question. What do you think the hardest part of your craft is? It's a question for you, too. What do you think the hardest part of our craft is? For me, it's dieting. Yeah. <laughs> it's dieting. It has to be dieting. Because, you know, when I played football, I spent my whole entire football career. And like I said, I came in 190, and I topped off to 250, Golly. gaining weight. And that's I spent every time just, like, eating, eating, gaining weight. Now what makes martial arts is this is the food you got to eat. This is <laughs> the food you got to eat. And be like, okay. And yeah. I'm looking at this chicken and i'm like why does it look plain why like, there's no seasoning it's too much sodium in there <laughs> i'm like thinking to myself like chicken. oh man so it's, it's the eating because like i said too it's just like i i tell people when when being in training camp it feels like i've never been to rehab like but it feels like i'm in rehab <laughs> just literally like yeah. Everything got to be going well. If I have a bad training session, I don't want to relapse. <laughs> if I relapse, I'm going to be like, where is this? Uh, <laughs> it's a fall time now. It's just like yeah. when, when fall time come around, I'm, I'm, I love pumpkin rolls. <laughs> you would tase you. Tase you yeah, like pumpkin, pumpkin everything. Today. Well, she said that today. Huh? Yeah. 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 Pumpkin everything. Aww. Yeah, it is bad. It's just like you're going to be like, you're going to go back to something. <laughs> you know roll. it's bad. You know it's bad for you, but it makes you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> And then you get, you, bad get session. you get three eating and you'd be like, why, 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 <laughs> why did I do that? Give me another pumpkin roll. Exactly. Well, how, you're uh, fighting in October. Yep, yeah, October 6th. So you're on that big card. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Man, you know, it's crazy because I, uh, I got opportunities to fight at pretty cool places. I got opportunities to fight in pretty big cards. And this by far is going to be a really big card. So right now you're like pretty strict with the diet. You're, oh, you're definitely. Like, okay. Definitely strict. Did you, have you trained yet today? Um, no, I haven't trained today. Usually my Wednesdays are kind of my easy, day. my easy days. I usually try to get treatment a lot. So um, I end up finding myself at UT either getting adjusted, cold tub, hot tub. Um, but when it comes to treatment, though, like I tell people, people, when I run down the line of treatments that I that I get either, whether it's dry needling, hot tub, cold tub, chiropractor, deep tissue, Jeez. hyperbaric chamber, um, what else? Uh a fascial stretch um what else um just just a little bit of everything what's your number like what's your go-to like if you're if you only have time for something quick like what's your go-to for recovery uh chiropractor okay yeah that's how you guys kind of got connected connected yeah. Yeah. chiropractor yep. Right? Yep. melanie melanie she's if people don't realize you just like i didn't understand the benefit of like chiropractor until like after we had a chiropractor when i played football and he he worked on us and i didn't understand i was like all right cool i, I feel kind of good but whatever usually i usually when i when i used to see him every tuesday and thursdays i'll go into the gym and my coach was like oh okay you want to go see dr petty and i was like yeah how'd you know your movement a lot better than that. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, okay. And then even with Melanie, like, she was like, what do you need to work on? What do you need to work on? And I'm like, I need this. I'm hurting right here. I'm hurting right here. A couple adjustments. After that, I'm, I, feel, go. I feel golden. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's just like, I feel like, at, I know at times my strength increases by like 25%. My flexibility increases. It's wow. crazy. And my balance and coordination, and everything increases too. You you've been going to a chiropractor. I've been going to a chiropractor life. since I was like 11, 12 years old. Wow. Yeah, yeah well, we I never really had a primary care doctor growing up. He was the our chiropractor we used. He also did some like homeopathic stuff too. He's awesome. And so Melanie uh, kind of stepped in the last she's been about a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Melanie's yeah. been been real good. It's funny because you guys have that in common too. You. You try lots of different things for recovery. Mm -hmm. You're doing lots of different kind of things, but the one thing you do for sure is the chiropractor. chiropractic. Yeah, it yeah. always yeah. comes yeah. back to that. Yeah, because your body, as much, people don't realize you're naturally strong on one side. So you're going to abuse that side a lot more. And, you know, those muscles are going to shorten. And the other side is going to try to compensate for the other side. And when she started doing that, people don't realize, like, you can be walking and you think you're walking perfectly fine until, you know, you're laying down. Oh, your left ankle is a little shorter than your right ankle. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. and next yeah. thing you know, you get up and you can feel your body just like start adjusting. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy. It's crazy. It's kind of like you don't realize what you're missing until you do it sort yeah. of thing. And then you yeah. do it and you're like, I've been walking around like this. <laughs> you know, like. I've never gone to a chiropractor and 
Melanie's adjusted me a couple times now, and I felt infinitely better. I yeah, couldn't wait you for couldn't her to get hear. better. I was going to say, didn't you like, didn't she do it? And you were like, whoa, I can hear again. Well, I jammed my neck <laughs> yeah. on those handstand yeah. push-ups. And, it's been lingering. And it's been, and the first time she adjusted me, it just cleared everything up. I could literally hear again, you know, like better. Yeah. It, like I said, it works, man. People don't realize that. And like a lot of guys at the gym, when I was getting all these treatments, they're like, why are you doing all of this stuff for? Until one day, I mean, I know Mel worked on a couple guys and, you know, either they're getting stretched and it's like, okay, I can see why you're doing all this mm-hmm. stuff for them. So I tell people two thirds of the time I spend destroying my body, to, just completely destroying my body. That one third I got to spend, you know, taking care of my body too. Yeah. How do you feel about sleep? I need eight hours of sleep. Yeah. I need eight hours of sleep. People you haven't don't... seen that in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Three kids, you're not getting eight hours of Man, sleep. Rich used to I, sleep a lot. I used to sleep 10, 11. I wouldn't set an alarm. Yeah. So I'd stay up, usually go to bed about 10. Wouldn't wake up sometimes till 10 the next day and just let my body, when I needed it, need it and go. But the kids. But kids, man. Yeah. Kids. <laughs> I don't have any kids. So I was, yeah. I, like literally, if, if I know I'm going to have an intense day in the morning, Pop of melatonin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I take melatonin at night too. Yeah. Melatonin king over there. Yeah. Good night. Do yeah. that. If I want to, if I want a, a sleep that I know, like I don't want anybody to bother me, I pop a melatonin and like two valerian roots, mm-hmm. and I'm mm. done. I can't. I wake up. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? I'm, cold. I'm like done. Valerian root. I've well, never even heard. I've heard of that. Yeah. 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 It's too. in a lot of the like more homeopathic sleep type of things really yeah is it a capsule or something or it's a capsule it's pretty potent too like i just (laughs) wake up and you don't know where you are apparently that's awesome i want that kind of sleep yeah where do we find so you still have access to like ut's some of their stuff that's That's cool that's awesome pretty much um i'm there at least two times two to three times a week nice and two to three times a week now since like the fight is coming closer i'll um my training is, is still pretty much the same but i'm I'm still increasing my, my my cardio level and whatnot, but also to just I go in there, I'll do the cold hot tub, and um, they usually every time I'm in there, anytime I need anything, they always that's hey, awesome. Yeah. Like, look, my shoulders bothering me. Oh, I need my shoulders to get stretched, my neck to get stretched. So that's cool. They 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 good at uh, welcoming back people. That's so good. That's good. Yeah, that's really that's good, good to hear. Well, they say, so you said like you kind of, I mean, found fighting and then we're just naturally good at it. I mean, is it something that you love to do now or you just do it because, oh, okay, I'm still good with this. It's, you know, like, or is there anything about it that definitely keeps you coming back? I mean, you know, at times it's a I job. told myself. <laughs> no, that's no, no, a job. That's I, what I was asking. It's really. a great <laughs> job, but, like it's, it's but. A job, but you got to love it too. Yeah. At times I look at it and I'm like. And I tell myself, like, there's times when I'm going in, I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm like, why? <laughs> and then after that, it's just like the training is I love to train. I love to work out. There you go. Mm, and man, I love you the really comp- fit in on yeah. this group. <laughs> but, but look, I love it's the competition level. It's just like, you know, when you're doing something, it's just like mono, mono. I said, mm-hmm. I'm going to do this to you and I want you to stop me. Yeah. So. Is there any and, feeling like winning in the octagon? Oh, yeah, gosh. And winning? It, it's no other feeling. Yeah. You got to understand, too, when you – a big knockout and you just – it's almost like <laughs> – it's almost like being in that gladiator mindset. It's just like yeah, the just big knockout. Just validated immediately. It, it just it, – oh, man. It's, it's unreal. It just gives you that certain rush. Like I said, my first fight ever, an hour after – it was an amateur fight. Right. An hour after that fight was over, my somebody went to go shake my hand, and my hand was literally shaking. Sure. That's how that's how intense it was for me. It just like I tell people like for me, um, it like runners when they've been running for so long, they have that runners high. Mm-hmm. It feels like when I work out, that's what I have. Right. So even in competition, it's just you know you get that big win, and then next thing you know, you just get the big knockout, and the crowd just uproar. Right. And next thing you know, it just for that split second, you feel like you just there are no one else. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, I mean, there was actually, I heard one of that, that monk guy that I listen to sometimes, the he monk. actually said this week, it's Jay Shetty. Uh, how did he say? I know who you're talking it? about. I, no, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I actually follow him on uh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. And yeah. this week he was talking about, he said, to be tested in the most ancient of human ways, you are left with your head and your hands. And I feel like that just like epitomizes what you said. Like, I mean, that epitomizes sport and I mean... 
Yeah. And just like what you're conditioned to, like that goes back to way back when. Yeah. Which is pretty incredible. But I mean, if you look at pretty much every sport, every sport is like, if you really want to think about yeah. it, it's almost like modern day warfare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Competition. That's what I was getting at. Pieces yeah. of it. It's like. And so it's just like, it's just one team is, you, you got the opposing team. And so with mixed martial arts, I think it's, I think it as Troy, you get your two best fighters and you put it in there and right. you put them mm-hmm. in, you, you, whoever wins. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's intense, man. It's intense, but I love it. The part I love about it, too, is that anything can happen. Oh, yeah. Like, anything can happen, depending on what happens in that particular match. It depends. Fight. A lot of times, people thought whoever shows, shows up. I mean, it's true, but at the end of the day, just like, you know, some guys are supposed to win, and next thing you know, you know, they, they're against the rope. And be like, and some guys are just, it, that's why you don't got any undefeated fighters. It's hard to have undefeated fighters. Right. So... That's awesome. I think it's kind of like what you're saying too, though, is like you made such a great point about if you're having a bad day or something's hard in your life, I think it, it would be ultimately exposed in the octagon more so than I think maybe in some other sports you could hide it a lot more. Whereas that, I mean, your peak physical state of yeah. fighting, I, I mean, I feel like that stuff's just going to be exposed so much more. It, it is. And, you know, I tell people that like – you know, football, you play every week. I tell people when you play football, you can watch a quarterback. He can go, you know, seven for 20 week one. Everybody's going to kill him that week. You know, week three, he comes back, go, you know, 30 for 35. Oh, my God. He's the best. He's the I best, guess. yeah. So, with, you know, with fighting, it's just like you only fight every so often. So, people are always going to remember you for your last fight. Yeah. But that mental aspect of it, too, is just like – Mentally, if you're not there, it can it can completely, completely mess you up. And people don't see the people only see the fighter that's in the octagon right then and there. They don't see the the times that you puke, the times <laughs> that you didn't want to show up to practice because you was like, I'm, I'm sick of this. So they don't see that part of the fighting at all. And you know. It, it's like fighting is it's more than that. Like I said, it ends up being a lifestyle. Right. So. Wow. What do you think the greatest gift you have is that money can't buy from like an intangible standpoint as an athlete? Like what do you think your greatest gift attribute is that got you to this point? I listen. Yeah. <laughs> I listen. <laughs> That's cool. You, le- you learn to listen really quick. But I learned that at a young age of being an athlete too, just playing football, even wrestling and stuff. When your coach say you to do something, you do it. <laughs> you don't think about it. Yeah. That's why now it's just like it's, it's one of the prime reasons growing up as a kid and stuff. When your parents tell you to do something, like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then after that, when you become an adult, you're like, yeah, mom and dad was right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have done, done that. should have done that. Because the same thing that you they told you, you're doing the same thing with your kids too. Yeah. So being coachable. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Um, that, I think that's one of the biggest things is is being coachable. Because if if not, I mean, if you don't listen, it won't. Get, it's not gonna get you anywhere. Especially right. if you think you know everything. No, 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 coach. The guys will be like, no, coach. I, I I know this. I got this. I got this. No, that's not happening. Point. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Out cold. I mean, coaches yeah. are not necessarily better people they just have a different perspective and that perspective is important oh yeah but they a lot of times they know you better than than actually they know you better than yourself and coaches are the thing about coaches too though they end up being pretty much father figure freaking mm. your therapist yeah. <laughs> your relationship <Wow>. everything <laughs> they become everything because at the end of the day coaches like you're not with me what's going on yeah right <laughs> they're like okay i need you to click because they know how to turn you on and turn you off it's just like literally calm down like some, sometimes it, there's times my coach is like he'll look at me and i'm in the gym and i'm like and i'm just dragging he'll look at me he'll like go home <laughs> and i'm like what and i'm like no i'm fine no, go home and then after I go home, and then after he'll come back the next day and be like, I'm like, I'm good. You're I pissed. just, yeah. yeah. I just needed, he knows that I needed a day off and like, mm-hmm. all right, cool, I'm good now. And so it, it, it's, yeah. I think my biggest thing is like, I, I, I listen. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Who was your biggest mentor growing up? Um, I'd say probably my high school football coach. Yeah. Yeah. I said probably my high school football coach. I didn't know my potential in any sports until. Until he came around and like literally from I was just an average football player and ended up being one of the best football players in the state of Florida. Wow. 
So, but he knew how to, he knew how to get things out of people. What like, did he teach you? Just discipline. Mm-hmm. Discipline. The thing about football is it's a team sport, but, you know, it, it's just discipline and competition. We always had competition with each other. And that's, I think for me, that's to this day still instilled in me. Anybody that knows I'm a competitor. It's just like, if I don't like being outdone. I don't like being outdone. Yeah. And we used to like, when we put, when we, even, even in college, you just, you always talk crap to each other. <laughs> Football guys always talk crap. It's, yeah. it's always competition. It's just like, you know, I'm going to outdo you. I'm mm-hmm. going to do one better than you. And, you know, my mindset is always, always to that nature. Like somebody take a shot on me. And like, even, even when I'm doing drills and stuff and coaches like time, I got to be the last one to finish. Yeah. I have to be, if I'm not, it's just like, but I put myself in that mindset too. And that transitions over to that transition to everyday life that transitions into mixed martial arts too. Mm-hmm. So, isn't it incredible though? Like, because we talk about we've talked about our high school coaches before too. How influential those people are in kids' lives. Like, I most athletes I've met and spoken with, mm-hmm. without question, one of their greatest mentors, myself included. Yeah, I had a couple sure. from high school that I wouldn't be who I am today without. I mean, that's just so incredible to me. That's so important, and it's like. That's great. I mean, that's what we were talking about the other day with all these kids playing video games and stuff all the time and not playing sports. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine what my life would be without my – mine was my high school baseball coach. Same yeah. way. It was like, you know, was one of the one of my biggest mentors. And so it's like, man. But I take it at, I take it as, too, is like, you know, when you're – when you're going through your high school years, you're making that transition into technically – you know that, that you're still a teenager, but you're technically an adult too. Mm-hmm. You're making that transition, and you're trying to within those years, you're trying to find yourself. And a lot of times, when whatever sport you're playing, and you actually, you know, end up being good at the sport, you're giving you all at that, that. They actually see all of that because mm-hmm. you know you you still find yourself when you get to college or after high school. But like it kind of lets you know, okay, this is where I need to go. It actually that starting point to be like, okay. This is the starting line. This is where I need to go. This, that's why I figured out. Because I would, I would have never thought in a million years I would have been going to college playing football. Right. Well, mm-hmm. And so, what would you tell a like if you were going to talk to a, a teenage boy, what would what would be the advice that you would give them? I love that question. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of times when people ask me, but like, what do I need to do <clears throat> to the? Excuse me. <clears throat> a lot of times when people ask me, what do I need to do to be the best ever? I'm not going to tell you to train hard. I'm not going to tell you to, you know, train at a good gym, find a good coach. I'm not going to tell you all. I'm not going to tell you none of that. My number one thing is what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? People don't understand when you're an athlete, when you do what you got to do, like the lifestyle that I have to do, I have to give up a lot. Mm -hmm. Then once you give up, what else are you willing to give up? Mm -hmm. In order to be the best, you just like the sacrifices have to keep on coming. So it's just like what are you willing to give up? Because a lot of times people see, like I said, like when you when the fans watch the fights and stuff, they see when you're in the moment, just to fight that moment when you're getting your hand raised or whatnot. But they don't see all the underlining stuff that you have to go through. How many times people have been through training? You don't. People are not going to talk about, you know, even posting on social media. You always want to post the good Highlight. stuff to train. Yeah, yeah. Sure, not the, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to train something. You, you're not going to train. You're not going to put a post where. You know, like the other day, I was getting chewed off by my coach. <laughs> I'm not going to put that on there. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to put the time that, like, yeah. I almost broke down just because it's just like I felt like this was too much. And people are not going to put that on there. Right, right. It's, just, <laughs> it's just like, what are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. It yeah. just, it, 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 the big thing is sacrifice. Man, that's well, big. that's a we great answer. That. Last one, I'll make it good. Man. Well, you kind of just answered it because I was thinking, um, again, because you always hear people ask, like, you know, the positive things, but I was going to say like, you know, is, is there a dark side to your pursuits? But you kind of just answered that, you know, dark side. Yeah. I mean, it it depends. I mean, you, you, it depends. Okay. The book I was talking about, the 12 is a life is Mm -hmm. talk about having order. The main thing is it it focuses on is order and chaos. Mm -hmm. And people sometimes are like, well, you need order in order to do this. And I'm like, you need, I'm like, no, you need both actually Mm -hmm. you know um and with that it's just like you know i tell people you know too much order 
you know, Hitler had too much order and it turned into be the Holocaust. You know, if you have too much chaos, end up being something like Marilyn Manson. So mm-hmm. you need just yeah. that right amount. Mm. So, um, and that's the thing I've been trying to, and that's the thing the past probably couple months that I've been kind of thriving on is that, that order and chaos. Like, even when I'm in competition, when I'm in the octagon, I need order. I need to get my composure straight. I need to, you know, make sure I'm listening to my coach. But when it's time for chaos, I need it. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's wow. time for chaos is when the KO comes. You got to be familiar with both sides yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes wow. people ride that line. <clears throat> sometimes people try to mm-hmm. play between the lines and you can't. You just got to ride that line. You the can't edge. play between. Yeah. I love that. That's wow. awesome. That's really cool. Tell, Man, it's been good. Tell that everybody. Awesome. Uh, yeah. When, when you're fighting. Well, um, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, 003 underscore OSP, along with Twitter. Facebook, just type my name over in St. Peru. But got a big fight coming up October 6th. Uh, I'm trying to get you back on yeah. talk about it after. It's going to be intense. It's going to be oh, intense. Oh, I can't wait to watch. So you're yeah. on the pay-per-view. Yeah, I'm in the pay-per-view. I'm third fight of the night. And uh, Khabib. Khabib fight. Woo, yeah. it's big. Woo. It's big. Yeah. That's cool. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Thanks for Dude. taking the time today. Yeah, thanks that for having so me. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we'll have to do it again. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. CrossFitMayhem.com, MayhemMindset.com. Yes, sir. And that's it. Peace. Peace. Peace.